live from the Vid Summit in Los Angeles, California. It's going to be your boy here, self publishing with Dale, and I'm going to be covering some questions and answers. This one's going to be a quick one, so you don't want to go anywhere. Welcome to Self Publishing with Dale, and if you want to master DIY publishing, make sure that you hit the subscribe and turn your notifications on to get all my latest videos. You can probably tell I'm really jazzed. I'm super excited right now. Uh, here's the deal. If you're coming in late, which some of you, you're probably not going to be able to hear this, uh, we're in for a cup of coffee and we're out. I'm actually on my lunch break before I get ready to jump into another session here in beautiful Los Angeles, California for the Vid Summit 2017. Now, Vid Summit, how does this apply or how is it applicable to self publishing and such? Well, this is going to have a lot to do with the content I deliver you, the viewers, as well as how it can be able to evolve this channel to better deliver the content that you're looking for. So that we get everything out of the way, uh, drop your comments, drop your questions, and just continue to fire those off because we're going to rapid fire, we're going to get through these things, and I really need to actually disconnect at about quarter till the hour. So we got 30 minutes. I can't promise you I'll get to your question, but it certainly will bring your question to the top of the pile. If you remember this, hitting super chat is going to get my attention. All right. I'm not trying to say that you got to pay for my attention, but it will grab my attention. Super chat is that simple feature at the very bottom. It's got the dollar sign. You click the little dollar and I'll be able to cover your questions. But in the meantime, since now we're just building up a queue of questions, I will be able to peel through these things. There are going to be some mini changes coming to this channel. I'm going to let you know in the very, very, very near future. So keep your subscription on, turn those notifications on, and be prepared because I'm going to tell you, you're going to probably be seeing less of this pretty face in the very coming weeks here. So you got to really stay tuned because time's going to be a little less than what I used to do here on this channel. All right, we're starting to see some people peel on in here, so I'm going to pull up. You guys forgive me, I don't have my nice studio like I normally do. We're inside our, our suite here in Weston. All right, so uh, Scorp, good to see you. I don't know if that's an O face. Um, thanks nonetheless. Hey Dale, I saw you and your wife yesterday on Daryl E's conference video. Yes, that, that was us, that was us. Yeah, front, front row and center. Uh, Daryl Eves is a, is a tremendous man. I've, I've yet to actually uh, steal a little bit of his time but I've had the pleasure of actually talking to Nick Nemen. Uh, obviously, he's done quite a bit of my channel art and done a lot of the direction here for this channel. He's been hugely influential. Uh, I spoke with actually Owen Video. Some of you guys may not be very, very aware of Owen Hemsath. Just tremendous. I actually was talking to him, and um, no, don't don't hold this against me now. Um, and you can't hold me to it. Uh, Owen did express to me possible collabs here in the very near future, and I was kind of blown away. Um, and I also got to sit in front of uh, multi-millionaire Dan Locke the entire time. So you can only imagine I, I, I could, the pressure that I felt as I have my large noggin probably obstructing his view. Uh, but Dan Locke killed it yesterday during a, his, uh, his talk about um, building a brand, asking for the money that you want. And that one, I'm telling you, his talk was stellar. If you ever get the opportunity, look up Dan Locke, that's spelled L-O-K. Dan, just, I'm telling you, irreverent, I wouldn't even call it irreverent, brutally honest, brash, abrasive, but he tells it just like it is when it comes to looking for the value in your brand. All right, uh, moving forward, uh, let's see here. Uh, Kim here, what's happening? Kim here and I were chatting it up yesterday. I actually was videotaping the TubeBuddy uh, session here with Brian G. Johnson, Nick Nemen, uh, Roberto Blake, Owen Video, and... Um, Andrew can from TubeBuddy. It was it was amazing. It was really cool. Let's see here. Um, I first recognized his wife. Then I was like, yeah, that's them. <laughs> yeah, yesterday I was just wearing the uh, t-shirt. Today I, I've, it's cold in these rooms. So I had to kind of literally put on my dress clothes to keep warm. Daryl Eves is, is stellar. I really highly recommend anybody that wants to get into video content creation watch Daryl Eve's stuff. It, it's just wonderful stuff. He had an awesome session yesterday, which by the way, I believe it's still free over on YouTube. I am Tony Jacobson. I just discovered your channel, loving it thus far. Just self-published my first book earlier this year. 
I want to hear what that book is. Uh, so if you could just do me a favor, uh, put the title of your book as well as your name. I would definitely just take your time to shamelessly self-promote. I really encourage that from anybody watching these live video chats. Take advantage of this right now while the channel's still small. I'm telling you that there's going to be big things on the horizon and there's going to be thousands upon thousands more followers and subscribers. So right now, while these videos are up and semi-permanent, put your book inside there. Promote that stuff. I want to hear about it and tell me what it's about, how it's been going. And if it's your first book, congratulations. The first book is always the toughest. As soon as you can break into that, it gets even more exciting. Because I'm going to tell you this, that it never gets old hitting the publish button. But I, I, there, I still can't capture that same feeling. And I think my wife will disagree. She's coming on, by the way. Um, she, she's making lunch, getting some food. She was getting a little lightheaded. I had some almonds here. But the first book, I, I can't capture that same feeling that I had, that certain innocence that I had. I'm gonna scoot over here. This is my wife, Kelly, everybody. Make sure that you Hi. blow up the chat. Tell her I say hello. Uh, you know, if you, she loves to hear from you guys. Uh, boy, we need to get you a taller chair. I, I look like Gigantor here. I'm gonna just tilt the camera down here, folks. All right, so um, Owen said your name during the stream. You know what? Uh, I'll do you one better here. I'll do you one better, Kim here. Um, let's see here. Here's Owen Himsath. Thank you very much, Kim, for dropping Owen's videos. I, I love Owen. His voice is getting real raspy from talking a lot. I, I, I gave him a hard time. I, I won't say exactly what I said uh, to him directly. So glad you made it to the vid summit. Yes. Dog Dad, listen. Everybody in Utah, I mean everybody in freaking Utah, came to vid summit except for one Scott J. Marshall II. So you better be here next year. That's all I'm saying. Moving forward, here we go. <coughs> it's called Disable Your Disability, Live the Healthy Life You Deserve by jo uh, Tony Jacobin. Tony, fantastic. Uh, I want to get a direct link. So if you can do me a favor, I don't think YouTube's gonna allow you to drop a link or maybe Kim here can do me a favor of just getting the link to that on Amazon or just send me a message uh, that can you could go to Dale at selfpublishingwithdale.com. Uh, let me pick up a book. I, I want to check it out. That sounds like a, a really good one. Live the healthy life you deserve. You sold me right away. I love health and fitness books. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, you got a Kelly. There she is. Hi, Dale and Kelly. Yes, Kelly's going to start to become very instrumental in some of the future videos. Am I not right? Yes. She wants to do some of the streams. So keep in mind, guys. Any amount of success that I have is directly because of this lady right here. Now, remember, we both run our respective businesses, okay? She has her own LLC and I have my own LLC. Yeah, we can kind of influence each other, but for the most part, I'm gonna tell you this. Whatever success I'm having, hers is three times as much. So while she's on camera, you might wanna ask her the good questions. It's just, just a suggestion. Um, Except me, I, Kim here, you're not here as well. You and Scott J. Marshall need to get into an Uber and just ride start, it on start out. Driving. Start driving. Mm -hmm. Start driving. That's it. Um, I forgot you were in Utah, Kim here. Uh, it sounds like a good book. Yes. Oh, hey, it's, it's our buddy Carol. Carol's on here. Hi, Carol. Carol's our Izzy sitter. So anybody that's thinking about breaking into our house, you're screwed because uh, <laughs> Carol will mess you up. Trust me. She's punched me a couple times when I used to train her. Um, and, and she does, she, she's not soft. You know how like pals, you're like, yeah, you know, you No, she like gorilla punches me like, boom. I'm like, oh, what are you doing? That's not what friends do. <laughs> All right, uh, we get to get some questions here, guys. Let's get it cracking. Uh, I got about 20 minutes. I'm gonna disconnect and I need to get some food in my belly before I jump back into the next session. So I would like to hear some questions, comments, concerns. Um, excellent. Everybody, you could see that there is a link inside the chat right now. For those of you that are watching this on the replay, I, I will try to get the link to um, Tony's book, and that way everybody can kind of check that out. Yeah, go buy it. No, I have been I have been told that before. Oh, about you strong arming people, strong punching people. Yeah. By the way, um, it, while I'm at it too, actually, Carol's a good friend, and of course, I've actually helped kind of coach her in a little bit of her business of self publishing. Go take a look at some of her children's books as well as her health, her, uh, health and fitness books. She has uh, ones 
that are called uh, What Am I? And her name is Carol Langkamp. Go take a look at Carol's books. She's put those together herself. Ah, here we go. I have a couple of books that don't sell much. Should I put them on Pronoun? If you've only got them on Amazon and you're noticing the KDP Select program is not doing you any favors, um, I would recommend definitely look into aggregate publishers. You could go for Pronoun. Pronoun's dead simple. Draft a digital, dead simple. Smashwords, it's not so much, and I will start to tap in a little bit more, which by the way, I forgot to tell you, Smashwords paycheck has gone up considerably this month, and the See? month's not even over. So, loving me some Smashwords, but the problem is, Smashwords is a little harder. So if you're, if you're having struggles with publishing some books, Smashwords might not be your thing. So I want you to consider Pronoun, I love draft -to digitals new auto formatting software. So I would really recommend Eriberto. Eriberto, I'm, I'm thinking, is probably how it's pronoun pro properly pronounced. Um, definitely try Pronoun, for sure. You will just have to check off the KDP option if you've already got it on KDP. You just provide the link to your Amazon uh, thing and then they just, they, they waive that. I love Google Play. How many books did it say I had downloaded for just the chest and arms workout today? I showed Over it to you. Over a thousand? It, it, it was nuts. Like I've had an incredible, incredible day through pronouns. So um, I don't think it was quite a thousand. It's actually been about a thousand over the past like month or so. But it was like t today, I think I had like 180 downloads. So it's it's pretty incredible, I'm telling you. Pronoun is underutilized and underappreciated. I know I speak a lot about draft to digital, but the one thing that I think draft to digital is missing right now is if they can get Google Play, if they get KDP. Trust me though, if you haven't watched the interview with Kevin Tomlinson yet, that light just randomly turned on. Um, if you haven't watched that interview with Kevin Tomlinson yet, please go back. I actually put a very special interview with him on yesterday. And Kevin's from draft to digital the guy is a successful self-published author, and he's what is considered the voice of indie publishing. That's right, the voice of indie publishing. That's a big name and a big moniker. A lot of people are like, oh, you're so awesome. I'm like, have you seen Kevin Tomlinson yet? But make sure that guy's book is off Kindle Unlimited. Finish out the 90-day yeah. contract. So it, it, if you caught, you might want to say it just a little louder. Um. If you want to publish on Pronoun, just make sure that the contract's done with Kindle Unlimited. Because yeah. you're supposed to only have it on their platform. Um, and I would hate for you to get caught and we gave you that advice. There you go. There you go. So. Uh, Kim here is not overwhelmed by Smashwords. Or, or she's kind of underwhelmed because she said Smashwords is so meh for me. Uh, a lot of people have that opinion. And I'm hoping that it can kind of... <sighs> I would like to try to reach out to some influencers within Smashwords uh, community because there's so many areas of opportunity that are so missed inside Smashwords. One of the things that they do is they overwhelm with too much information. I mean, it is literally wall after wall after wall after wall of text and they're not making it easy. And the other thing is they're a great aggregate publisher and I do benefit a lot from using them. But sometimes I kind of question of the validity on some of the other platforms that they picked up. I mean, are they really all that great? Uh, some of them I don't even know that I ever collect any money, much less get any kind of extra exposure. I don't do Smashwords because he complains about it being hard to format, so I just, I don't even bother. Oh my gosh! Ameko Osai, what are you doing, man? You don't need to be throwing down, oh. <laughs> 50 pesos, uh, my boy, my boy. I'm like, I'm like, he's like, I'm like, what are you doing that for, man? Uh, are these, uh, are those options good for books with heavy pictures and tables? What do you suggest? P.S. You look great. Thank you, my friend. This is actually used to be my old gimmick uh, for the um, all my joke videos, if you recognize it. So anybody that hasn't had the opportunity, you know that uh, Ameka is one of my absolute favorites, favorite self-published authors that, or excuse me, self-publishers that is on uh, YouTube. So make sure that you go and click on his little thumbnail uh, profile picture here inside chat and go visit him. We are going to be doing more videos in the very, very near future. And because of me being out of town, unfortunately we won't be able to do a collab video until next week. And I know I'll be on his channel this next time. Uh, so as far as heavy pictures and tables, let's start it out with Smashwords. No, 
Smashwords is really not that great. You're gonna have to compress a lot of your pictures. Uh, and unfortunately end up with either very small pictures or they become very pixelated. So um, I still use Smashwords. I've yet to get any really bad reviews for my things, but I mean, it's, it's workout books. But if you were doing, say for instance, a picture book or a child's book, it's going to be a little harder if it's very picture heavy. Tables, here's the general rule, and I kind of gave this one about pictures and tables in most ebook auto formatting software that's out there. Make sure it's about five inches wide by six inches tall at greatest. So if you can make it a little bit smaller and compress it to about a 72 DPI, that's where you're gonna be winning. There goes that light again. It just decides it's gonna turn on. So uh, what do I suggest? That's, that's pretty much my suggestion is when you go into formatting your book, uh, be prepared that you can't really, not that I've found yet, you can't anchor any of the pictures. So if you've got tables, convert those tables into pictures. Quite frankly, those are screwed. Um, I spent hours upon hours upon hours working on tables in order to do it for Kindle. As soon as I went over to platforms like the Smashwords, like the Pronouns, like the Drafted Digitals, unfortunately it becomes real wonky and it looks really messed up on most mobile devices. Did you want to hold this? I can. Yeah, here, you, you go ahead and start have, to read. Have you finished his um, super? Yeah, yep, uh, yes, thank you again, Ameko Osai, guys. Please take a look at him and uh, I'm gonna be doing a video here pretty soon for my self-publishing blueprint his course, you want to find out the best way to get to $1,000 per month, you need to go visit, you ready for this? It's selfpublishingwithdale.com slash blueprint. Take a look at that. We're not gonna be hard sales on you, but I'm just gonna tell you if you wanna do it the right way, take a look at my boy Emeko Osai. Araberto, so if technically KDP doesn't do much on the promotions, I should just up up uh, upload them on pronoun. I think so. Um, make sure you finish out the contract yeah. and once that's done um, it should go to the top of your KDP platform so you'll know it's done you don't have to check dash. in all the time yeah. and I would I try it I have 99% of my ebooks on pronoun and I make what two to three hundred a month for doing nothing yeah. so I'll take that Paul Rega you little stud She's better looking, LOL. Thanks for the last video, buddy. Curious, besides BookBub, is there a decent second choice for book promo? Hmm, I think we know of one. Uh, I have yet to test it out, but uh, we have a, an upcoming interview with Martin Crosby of uh, Book Doggy, and it is relatively inexpensive, and he does qu offer quite a bit of great services, but that's gonna be covered in that self-publishing interview and coming in the next few weeks. He's giving it back to me now. So Paul, good to see you. Uh, man, uh, Paul Rega, top 100 best-selling author. If you have not had the opportunity, you need to go back and watch last Friday's interview. Paul dropped some serious 411, and there's sometimes when I go into these interviews with the expectation of just kind of having a great conversation, he came in and provided so much value that I honestly, I left that learning more. So when I'm asking some of these questions, I was asking them legitimately, meaning like, I don't know. And he really, really delivered. So Paul Rega, my man. Uh, let's see here. Uh, remember folks, we're gonna be firing off here in about another 12 minutes. Fire off those questions. I'm gonna to try to keep up with them. And remember, if you wanna to come to the top of the queue, drop it inside the super chat, all right? A couple bucks will, will go a long way. It'll get my attention. We can kinda of get those questions covered. All right, I'm gonna keep moving along. And if I miss you, just ask the question again, please. David Bella, hi Dale, I put my first book uh, not long ago. Would love to hear your thoughts and tips. David. Do me a favor, uh, put the title of your book as well as your author name. And if Kim here has the discretionary time, she'll grab the link for that. Uh, I won't be able to cover that today unless you, can you open up your the Amazon store? Drop the name of your book and I'm assuming it would be um, your author name. Uh, Emeka, you were saying in regards to, uh, is that for print or ebook? Pronoun, Draft Digital, and Smashwords are just strictly ebook for right now. Um, as you and I have actually had our conversations, we're looking at other platforms such as Ingram Spark and such as uh, Nook Press. So those two are, are another couple of options, but I've yet to explore it, so unfortunately I can't be able to definitively say 
anything in favor for those outside of the fact that I've used KDP paperback and I've used create space paperback love both of them I obviously lean towards create space I don't know what what are your thoughts on create space versus K, uh, KDP I lean towards create space as well but I'm going towards diversifying both yeah because if something happens to my create space and they kick me off for some reason I still hopefully have KDP excellent yep that's she, she puts it a good way. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. There's a lot of people out there, unfortunately, still chasing after the Kindle publishing uh, uh, thing here. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Amazon's a very large platform, but I want you to remember, if they pull the carpet out from underneath you, you are screwed, okay? Um, I'm gonna tell you this, they can pull their carpet out from underneath me, I would be very disappointed, but I'm gonna tell you this much, we aren't gonna go into the poorhouse anytime soon because we have diversified, we have so many hoses going into the bucket here that it, it is just uh, i'm having a conversation with dan brock the deadbeat affiliate the other day and his eyes get as big as saucers because he didn't really realize the depth of our business of what we do within publishing and i just tell him you know there's so many avenues so remember if you're just doing kindle publishing start diversifying you heard it from her i told you she makes three times as much as i do I'm I I have no I have no shame in and sharing that. A quick thing, uh, this could be a whole nother subject on itself, but there's a different audience for Create Space and Kindle. So read up on where they publish, and go from there. Okay, uh, David Vela's book is Unlimited Fitness. Pen name is Braden Michael. That's spelled B E B R E Y D O N. All right, so I'm moving further forward down here. Um, give me just a moment here, folks. I'm gonna try to get everybody as, as quickly as possible here. Uh, so let's see here. My question, I'm working on building my brand. I will be writing in fantasy genre for young adults and adults. And I figured, is this genre better to have a face for the brand? You know, you're you're kind of the, the heavy fiction lifter on this one here. What is What is your thoughts on having a face to the brand? Uh, for fic sorry, I was looking this up. For fiction or nonfiction? For fiction. For fiction, it would be a young adult fantasy genre. Uh, I mean, it depends on you, I guess, yeah. because I think it's kind of cool mm -hmm. when you can, like, it's relatable. You can tell a story. Um, but there's authors out there that either have a um, stock photo for their photo um, or they have like um, like just like an icon or something and they're making some good money so I think it's just personal preference yeah it's gonna come down to personal preference if it were me uh, I would probably attach my face to it and probably just give it a different name like it could be like I don't know Lewis Dale Roberts you know I just I would flip the name so that way it just gets it to where I can still go out and make public appearances and I could have podcasts and I could still represent the brand in a way that it doesn't quite hamstring me. Is it impossible to run a fiction business without a face on it? Sure, it, you could do it. Uh, it's not impossible for sure. There's many people out there making some serious dough without having a single avatar on their fiction brand. And also, do you want to claim the niche that you write in? In my case, I don't. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there are many cases that you just don't want that fiction. Like, see, I don't mind having my children's fiction book. So my uh, children's fiction book brand, which is just, it's lying dead. If you guys ever look it up, it's Grumpy Gus. And I developed a lot of the things through the graphic design and underneath the name Dale Lewis. And I associated my, na my name and my face with that because I'm not embarrassed by it. I, I like the what I did. I'm very proud of what I did. And I'm very happy and I can stand behind it. But if you're you're embarrassed about something, you're putting pretty smutty things out there on the market, then chances are likely you're probably not gonna put your face with it. So just think about that, you know, long-term business plans. And here's the fact. If you put it out in, uh, let's say for instance, a book out on ebook, it's easy to wash that and unpublish it and get it off the market. However, once when you get it into print, all right, it's forever. It is forever. Because here's the thing is, even if you don't sell a single copy, all right, Amazon's still gonna keep that metadata in their actual search engine. So it'll always be there. For instance, you can look up Unlock Your Greater Life, my first book. It's a complete terrible, terrible atrocity. And um, if anybody's messaging me, by the way, I, I'm sorry, I'm paying attention to the chat here. Um, but it, it's terrible. But the thing is, I tried to get a hold of Amazon and said, can you, can you take that off? They're like, no. 
Because the thing is, if it's sold used by somebody else, they need to have that available so they can say it. Even though it might be out of stock or not, not any, you know, no longer available, they'll still have that in there. And I, I'm stuck with that, that terrible, terrible book. Uh, whoever Brayden Michael is, I forget who your real name is, uh, we can't go over everything. I'm not saying your book's an abortion by any means, but <laughs> we, we couldn't give it justice of what you need in the next five minutes yeah. and take care of everyone else. So I say get a hold of this guy yeah. and give us like a week because with traveling and stuff, yeah. um, we're going to be behind. So Right. And we're going to be planning on doing some more live streams in the very near future. So what I would recommend uh, to you, uh, David, is uh, just looking really quick, uh, clean cover. Um, I, I'm kind of just looking at it really fast. Unfortunately, it's just a very flat cover. It looks like it might be a, a fiber design, unfortunately. You might be dealing with like a, a little bit of a fixed budget. What I would recommend, if you have the discretionary expense, um, you may want to kind of get a cleaner, cleaner look. Uh, something that's going to make you stand out a bit. Get um, the caps off the title and subtitle. It looks like spam. Right, right, right. Um, and if don't, I don't, to... uh, that's, let's not gloss over that one. All caps, all right? I want everybody to remember this. If somebody sends something to you in all caps, it's like they're shouting! Uh, so make sure that you remember that, you know, in this day and age, all caps, unfortunately, yeah, it's going to command somebody's attention. It's also going to really tick them off, and they're going to probably scroll right past your page. What's the, uh, what's and the My rank? guess is he did some review swaps. Yeah, um, get some more reviews uh, if you can. Uh, you want to make sure, because I mean, you need to have some kind of balanced uh, look. I always get so excited whenever I get one star and two star reviews after I've had like a bunch of four and five stars because people are more apt and more susceptible to getting a well-rounded plate of reviews. So yeah, your rank can definitely uh, do a little bit better, but it's still pretty new since it's you know September 25th. So I wouldn't throw the towel in. Get some AMS no, ads put up there. I want you to try to, you know, if you've got the discretionary expense. It's not new. Oh, it's from 2016. Ugh. And your description's too vague. I would make it shorter because if yeah. I see a description that's four paragraphs, I'm not going to read it. So I probably won't even look at your book. Yeah. That's just keeping it real. Alrighty. Um, and yeah, you don't expect anything but brutal honesty from this lady. <laughs> don't ever ask her, you know, okay. How do you feel about crowd pricing for eBooks uh, where an individual can pay what they want sort of thing rather than Kindle Unlimited or free on Kindle? Ooh, that's a good one. Actually, I think that is available through uh, things like Noise Trade has that option. Um, you know, I've I've used some models like Noise Trade before, but I find in some instances where you give the option for your reader to give you a price or name the price, or even I think Smashwords even does it too. Um, unfortunately, I found that most 99.9% .9 of the time, you're gonna literally just get nothing. So um, I would just really recommend if you've got something that's good, if you've got some really good valuable content, do, do quite the opposite you know, demand a particular amount of money. It's just, you're gonna have to make sure that everything is perfectly in line, that you've got a great cover. You have a, a, a title and subtitle that is really gonna pop. Uh, so. If you have a book that people want, they really don't care what price you pay. Exactly. They, they, they just want the information, so just keep that in mind. My buddy Gord Iceman, Gord, I'm sure you're not watching this. Dude, you're killing me here. You are killing me. <laughs> All right. Um, trying to stay here with you guys and stay on track. Let's see here. If I happen to skip over any questions, please uh, drop them here. Create Space kicks off people. Yes, Create Space does that. Yes, push your luck. They will do it. One of my friends actually, this was something I shared in the previous stream before. He got banned, terminated through KDP. It was so severe that. CreateSpace got a hold of that news and they suspended his CreateSpace account. He had to go in as soon as he was able to pretty much plead his case. They opened his account up and I told him, clear out all of those questionable titles that were linked to your KDP account. He cleaned it out. Guess what? His business is finally going back up. Don't test CreateSpace's limits. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out there playing the whole black hat tactics over at CreateSpace. It will burn you. All right, I got to get one more question before I start to pop off here. Let's see here. Hassan, uh, excellent question, buddy. I'm, I'm sorry if I don't get to it. Um, 
Wow, there's a lot of great questions. I'm going to try to come back through this video and maybe we can double back around on this, on some of these in a future video. So my apologies, we're starting to get up uh, towards the end of the stuff. We're gonna probably push it. I'm gonna go five minutes more. You think we can go five minutes five more? Five minutes, but why don't we tell them to subscribe? Because if we have some extra time, we can always just answer the videos, the questions live. That's true. So I don't know how YouTube really works, but hit the subscribe button or get alert somehow. Yes, yes. <laughs> She's new to this whole thing, so yeah, subscribe. Make sure you turn your notifications on as per usual. Let me get. One more question. I'm just gonna kind of peel through here. My apologies if I didn't get to you, all right? Um, I sell Book of Mormon journals very well at Kim here. I, I, excellent, excellent. Keep doing it. Keep Quarter doing it. Quarter four is around the corner. Quarter four is around the corner. Pony up, everybody. If you got a little bit of extra cash, start to invest in your business, whether it be ads, whether it be putting out new content, whatever you do, don't go in to quarter four just meh. You know, you really need to double down. It was something I was telling with the Mecca, the amount of publications I plan on putting out over the next, well, I say 90 days, but it's gonna be less than 90 days. Probably the next 60 days is going to be incrementally huger. huger and I promise you, if you see great results from this Q4, you will not, you'll be so excited in 2018 for Q4 to come again, yes. Yes, I, I love when people quote me. Hit the bell icon to get notified. You got it. Yes. Yeah, what he hit said. Hit the bell icon. <laughs> All right, let me see here. I'm going to hit one more good question. I have a question. The audio version of my book is the process of going to retail on ACX. Are there any other services I should submit the, the version to? If you did your own audiobook, in other words, you didn't do a 50-50 royalty split, then you can have that option of putting it at 25%. So you're not exclusive to ACX. That was is probably what I'll be doing in the near future. Unfortunately, I did a lot of 50-50 royalty splits that I'm kicking myself for, and you'll hear me even talk about it in the interview from yesterday with Kevin Tumlinson of draft to digital Look at Find Away Voices. Uh, find Away Voices is an option. You can actually waive any of the Find Away Voice fees if you publish your book through draft to digital Remember the same rules that we went through with the whole KDP Select that we were just talking about. Uh, other one is going to be Authors Republic. A uh, big thank you to Sunny Odd Day for giving that recommendation of Authors Republic. They're another big one. But I think if you hear Kevin Tomlinson out about Find Away Voices, you're going to see that it, it is an exemplary service. And I'm really, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps from how excited I am about getting on Find Away Voices. It's lucrative. And here's the cool thing you still get distribution to Audible through Find Away Voices. Now, if you've already got an Audible, then don't worry about it. You can just check it off on Find Away Voices and take advantage of the many other possibilities through that aggregate audiobook publisher. So that is probably the way you can do that. Um, all right, I said one more one more question here and uh, and then we gotta wrap it up. So isn't CreateSpace owned by Amazon? Yes, you're correct, Kim here. It is owned by Amazon. But the thing is, it's almost like the left hand doesn't speak to the right hand. It rarely does, but don't play because the left hand will speak to the right hand in extreme cases. Um, let's see here. I saw one other question. I'm so sorry if I peeled through your question. I didn't get it. Please just tune into these live chats. I will be having another live. We're back on track next Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we're a little early today. If this proves to be a good time, we might come back to this this particular time. All right, one last question, and I really have to eat here, folks. Otherwise, I'll, I will die in the middle of a session here. I noticed a few other authors use one character in a series of children's picture books. Do you think that is a good, profitable method? Absolutely. That's branding, baby. That is branding. You, If you can use the same character over and again. So there actually is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut, shut off my chat here for just a second. Um, you need to have something identifiable. I want you to think of McDonald's. What is something you, you recognize with McDonald's? Go. Big Mac. Big Mac. People think Big Mac, all right? I think Ronald McDonald or the, the Big Arch. So when you're starting to develop a specific brand, and especially a children's book brand, you need to get it to where you have identifiable characters that your readers as well as the parents can start to recognize, that they can really start to identify. And that is really where branding is going to become huge. Big, 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 you know? So, I mean, there's good reason why you guys will see inside a lot of my thumbnails, my big bald head. I'm doing crazy faces, doing this, you know, things like that. I'm branding. I'm literally just putting my mug on every single one of those thumbnails. So it is definitely a good idea. 
All righty. Hopefully that covered the question. There is a, quite a few other ones. Folks, I'm about four minutes over, so I want to let you know that you need to tune in this next Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, all right? That's a few hours than we know. Uh, like right now, we're earlier than usual because we're in Los Angeles. So I need you to do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you share it with anybody that you know who is interested in DIY publishing or any type of book publishing. If someone said to you, I want to publish a book, then by gosh, share this video with them. Post it up there. Let's see if we can really get this chat popping before we go. How did everybody like this, this, uh, this really impromptu live stream? How did you guys like it? Let's hear it. You go ahead, comment right over here. Comment right there. Let's get it. Let's get it popping off. If you got some books, if you're excited about your stuff, if you got it coming up, I want to hear from you. All right. And as we start to wrap things up, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I, it's always my pleasure to be able to share this business of self-publishing with you, the viewer. So if you could just do me a favor, do that share. Let's see some thumbs up. There's quite a bit of you popping off here in the chat. I wanna see some thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, I wanna see some thumbs down, man. Either way, pick a thumb. Pick a thumb, either way. All right, gang, it's been a good time. Thank you very much to all my moderators. I really do appreciate it. And I'm out. Oh, wait, what am I thinking? Till later, it's been Self-Publishing with Dale. And I'll see you soon.